So we have a 3D printed model of a horizontal curve, and I'll talk through each of the components of the horizontal curve and how it fits together. The idea being with a horizontal curve is that we want a vehicle to be able to travel through the curve, be able to maintain equilibrium through the radius of the curve using super elevation, and then transition back to a tangent portion of the roadway. So that's the, the intent of this horizontal curve. So we're gonna start with normal ground. So at normal ground, we've got 2% cross slope uh, away from the center line, and that's essentially just to keep water flowing off the roadway. So any water that falls is gonna, gonna leave the roadway and gonna transition to the edge of the roadway. And this could be extended as long as, as the next tangent until the next curve occurs. So that's our, our normal ground portion of the roadway. And then we're gonna start transitioning from that normal crown and start rotating that outside edge of pavement upward. And we're gonna end up with, out, with adverse crown removed. So again, here's our inside edge of pavement at 2%, and then an adverse crown removed. We're gonna have a flat cross slope here. So the outside edge of pavement is flat at this, at this point. And this is the point where for a spiral curve, this will be where our curve starts. This is the tangent to spiral point. So in a spiral curve, that's where we will uh, begin our overall curve system for our typical naming convention. So it's, again, at the adverse crown remove, we're going to start then rotating the outside edge of pavement up or continue rotating that outside edge of pavement up until we get to the point that's known as reverse crown. At reverse crown, we're going to have a consistent cross slope of 2%. And at this point, we're going to start rotating the whole roadway. So the inside edge of pavement now is going to start rotating downward to achieve our design super elevation. So again, from reverse crown, now we're in the middle of the curve and we're going to make that transition to fully the design super elevation. So at this point, our cross slope is still consistent, but now we've reached that design, full design super elevation. So it may be 3% fully across, or 4%, or 6%, or whatever the design super elevation is. Now we're in the middle of the curve, so we're at our full design super elevation, and that will continue as long as uh, necessary for the specific parameters of the curve that has been designed. For a simple curve, depending on how the cross slope is laid out, the point of curvature is going to happen somewhere between our uh, reverse crown and our design super elevation. So if we're looking at where the points on the curve are, the PC will happen somewhere at this point. And again, a lot of cross slope changes have already occurred at the point we get to where we're actually starting to call it the curve, where the, the PC is going to begin with the curve. Now as we're leaving the curve, we're going to start making the transition from design super elevation back down to reverse crown. Again, reverse crown is that 2% slope all the way across the roadway. At this point, the inside edge of pavement is no longer going to rotate, so it will still remain there, but the outside edge of pavement still has a lot of time and a lot of transition to make. So again, reverse crown, we're going to continue rotating downward the outside edge of pavement. The inside edge of pavement remains at 2%, and at reverse, at adverse crown removed, we're gonna have a flat outside edge of pavement, and this is where we would see for a spiral curve, this is the end of that curve system, so this is the spiral to tangent point if we're looking at a spiral curve. For a simple curve, the PT is, will typically be located somewhere between design super elevation and our reverse crown. So at that adverse crown removed point, the outside edge pavement's flat, we're going to continue the rotating downward until we reach normal crowns. We have that 2% falling away from the center line uh, for each lane, and that normal crown will continue uh, until we reach that next curve. So we're going to continue with this section of normal crown until we reach that point. So this is the kind of summary of the cross slope changes that happen through a horizontal curve as a vehicle transitions from the tangent part of a roadway, making the transition through the radius. We have that area super elevated to help the vehicle maintain 
equilibrium so it can make the transition back towards the other tangent.